I'm continuing my personal tour of the seven regions that for me define hidden Italy. I'm still to visit the picturesque region of Piemonte to the north and next week I'll be taking in the iconic landscape of Tuscany to the east. But tonight I'm in Liguria, which is also known as the Italian Riviera and home to the UNESCO World Heritage Site of the five colorful fishing villages known as the Cinque Terre. I've been to Liguria before and I remember to be beautiful, but not this beautiful. And it's the location of this region which defines its produce. Its temperate climate means that basil grows aplenty making it renowned for incredible pesto. And with a sea full of fish, you can find some of the best anchovies in Italy. This is an area that absolutely showcases a picture-perfect Italian coastal way of living. But there is more to Liguria than meets the eye, as it produces the very lifeblood of Italian cuisine, some of the world's finest extra virgin olive oil. If the British Empire was built on cups of tea, then the Roman Empire was fueled by this liquid gold. Italy is the world's second largest olive oil producer. And Liguria is the most historic producer in Italy, as it's home to some of the country's oldest olive trees. High up in the hills of Monte Rosso al Mare, one of the Cinque Terre towns, is the Uliveto nel Parco, a farmstead where Tommaso and his family are taking full advantage of their location and climate. Do you mainly grow olive trees here? Yes, mostly olive trees, some grapes, some vegetables, but mostly olive trees. The olive trees could be more than 200 years old. Is this a type of olives that you, you have around Liguria? This is a typical Ligurian olive. There are 21 varieties of olive tree in Italy. The Tajasca is the native Ligurian olive and is smaller than the one that you see in the UK. These olives are typically harvested in October. Do you think I can try an olive? Yes, of course. Is it going to be bitter? A little bit, yes. A little bit. <laughs> okay, I'm trying an olive straight from the tree. Mm. Sounds good. Not too bitter. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's nice. So it's ready to be pressed. Mm. So how do you pick them? What's the process of picking olives? You know, how does it come from an olive to extra virgin olive oil? What do you do here? We put uh, nuts under the tree, then by hand we shake a little bit of the branch, then you collect the olives. For Tommaso, it's been a difficult season. He currently doesn't have enough olives to press, so he's taking me to a local co-op where I can see how the extraction process works. Cooperatives like this exist across my country and serve as a key part of the community. And as I'm learning, olives grow everywhere around here, even in people's back garden. And the thing is that anyone can come in these places and have their olives squeezed and then it becomes extra virgin olive oil. How cool is that? Posso provare? Yes. Hey, bye, bye. There are around 800,000 farms growing olives across Italy and Liguria alone produces half a million liters of oil annually. The process of making oil has essentially remained unchanged over centuries. First, the olives are washed, then ground, before the liquid gold is finally extracted. Extra virgin olive oil is made by cold pressing and normal olive oil by heat extraction. In just one hour, these little olives here becomes extra virgin olive oil. How wonderful. And I love the fact that the locals can walk away with their very own homegrown olive oil. Olives are one of my favorite ingredients, so I want to showcase them in a very special Ligurian dish. Overlooking at the Ligurian Sea inspired me to cook this recipe, which showcases the best of Ligurian ingredients. Anchovies, extra virgin olive oil, olives, and the recipe is called pollo con acciughe e peperoncino, which is chicken with anchovies, garlic, chili. Very, very simple, one pot dish, and everybody can do it. 
And where do we start? Is right here with the chicken. I got chicken legs, chicken thighs, which I think they work very good for this dish because they're gonna keep the moisture and they're gonna be very, very tasty. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put them in some plain flour, okay? So that's what you have to do. Get your oil into a hot pan. Make sure that the oil is nice and hot. And then massage the chicken into the flour. Just like that. Make sure that all the pieces are beautiful and coated into the flour. So, just shake any excess flour off and straight into the oil. Ah, that's. Cook the chicken on each side for three to four minutes until golden brown. At this point, what you want to do, you want to cook them for about three or four minutes on each side. Make sure that the skin is nice and crispy and turn them at least twice. Oh, look at that. It's exactly what I want, nice and crispy outside. And don't forget to wash your hands after handling the chicken. Same pot, we're going to add two cloves of garlic. And what I want you to do, just crush it. So pick them up straight into the oil, like that. After the garlic, I'm going to add the anchovies. This is one of the best of Ligurian ingredients, okay? And I'm using anchovies in oil. I'm gonna pour six. Straight into the pan, okay, in there. Then I'm gonna pour olives and I'm bay leaf, okay? Bay leaf like that. Now let me give you a very quick tip about bay leaf. This is a hard leaf, okay? So to get the flavor out from this leaf, it's gonna be quite difficult. The way to do it, you're gonna have to bruise it, crush it like that. The more you bruise it, the more flavors are gonna come out. Bay leaves goes in there, olives, couple of pinches of chili flakes, and fresh rosemary. Just put in there, stalk, leaves, whatever you want, just put in there like that, and start to mix everything together. What I want you to do with the wooden spoon is make sure that you break the anchovies into the oil. So what's gonna happen there? The saltiness and the flavor of the anchovies is gonna stay into the sauce, but you're not gonna get those fishy bits in your mouth. Okay, job done. Straight away, we're going to add balsamic vinegar. And it's very important when you add balsamic vinegar, you let it bubble it for about one minute. So the acidity goes away, the flavor stays into the sauce. 100 millimeter will definitely do the job. Mix everything together. Now look at that, all those bubbles, the balsamic starts to caramelize with the garlic, the anchovies. Add 100 milliliters of water, followed by 200 milliliters of passata or sieved tomatoes. Now mix everything together. Once the sauce is all mixed together, add in the chicken pieces. Make sure when you put them in, you cover them slightly with the sauce. Just a little touch of salt, not too much. Remember, you got the anchovies in there that they're quite salty. Cover it with a lid and cook it for 40 minutes. But don't forget, every 10 minutes, go there and move the chicken around. Oh, yes. The color is incredible. It kind of looks like when you do barbecue chicken, everything gets nice and sticky. That's the balsamic vinegar because it's sweet with the passata. Now, let's put this together. This is gonna be beautiful and tender. I would serve my dish with beautiful roast potatoes. Do something different, something that nobody's ever tried before. Ah, look at that. The best of the Ligurian coast, right here in one plate. What I've learned is that you may think you know somewhere, but there is always something new to experience. And I'm constantly being surprised on this food odyssey. I'm traveling through the heart of what for me is Italy's most iconic coastline. Spanning over 200 miles, the Ligurian coast is filled with hidden gastronomic gems. I'm now traveling from the hills of Monterosso al Mare to another coastal village of the Cinque Terre. 
to experience not just food, but an Italian way of life. This is Vernazza, another classic Cinque Terre town. But as no cars are allowed here, it's an unspoiled gem glittering on the coastline. Cinque Terre translates as the five earth villages that span the 21 miles of the Ligurian coast. And Vernazza is the fourth heading north. An unspoiled fishing village, this place is famous for seafood as well as fresh fruit and vegetables. But I'm not here to experience the traditional food markets as I've heard about a master gelataio whose flavor combinations are out of this world and I can't wait to meet him. Making use of all the local fresh produce is Gianluca, who is following his family's tradition in pushing the boundaries of Italian gelato with their unique flavor combinations. And this frozen dessert is a national way of life. No Italian would refuse the lure of gelato. So I want to find out how to make the perfect one. Now, how long have you been doing this? Uh, since uh, 1999, my dad opened this shop. Okay. He taught me everything. He showed you all the secrets. Yeah, he taught me, to me and to my brother, all his secrets. He was his dream to let know how to make gelato. To his children. Yeah, <laughs> it's special. We are making a seasonal gelato using typical ingredients local to Liguria. The interesting thing about Gianluca's gelato is it consists of three key ingredients. Peaches, basil and surprisingly, salt. Yeah. To give a bit of... Uh, yeah, because peach with basil, basil, remember oh, that. Mate, I trust you. Gianluca and I whiz it all together before pouring the mixture in the gelato machine to cool down. But what I really want to find out is the difference between ice cream and gelato. Gelato is made with fresh fruit, fresh milk, and served at in a temperature minus uh, 12. 13. Minus 12? Yeah. OK. And so ice cream? Ice cream is served at minus 22, 23, is strong. Ah, so it's, it's colder? Yeah. So let me get this straight. Gelato, fresh milk, Fresh fruits yeah. served at minus 12. So creamier, easy to scoop. Ice cream, long life milk, minus 22, harder. Harder, yeah. I prefer gelato. And 10 minutes later, we have just that. Perfetto gelato. Look like a cream. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. After 10 minutes, it becomes gelato. Yeah, it's done. And now we have to put the gelato in the fridge okay. for 15 minutes. Let's do it. I want, the, I want some gelato, so hurry up. Okay. Come on. After what feels like the longest 15 minutes ever, my gelato is ready to taste. Salute. Salute. Ching ching. There you go. Now, let me see. Mm. Definitely you feel the basil. Yeah. That kind of anise flavor of the basil, yeah. the, peach, the peach, smooth, not too sweet, which yeah. is really nice. This to me is perfection. This is to me is what Italy is all about. Yeah. Your father would be very proud of you, my yeah. friend. Well done. Thank you it's, very much, my friend. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm very thank happy. You, After trying the basil gelato, it's inspired me to take a unique twist on a traditional Ligurian dish. In Liguria, pesto is one of the most famous dressing of all. And I don't know if you realized, I used the word dressing and not a sauce, because a sauce is something that you would heat up in a pan and serve it hot with chicken, with pasta, whatever you want to use it. Dressing is something that you serve always at room temperature. And the pesto I'm going to prepare is a parsley pesto with garlic and capers. Yes, I know, in Liguria, the traditional pesto is made with basil, uh, parmesan cheese, uh, pine nuts. But because I'm going to do a linguine with scallops, the parsley and capers pesto is going to really, really work and complement the flavor of the scallops. So, where do we start? Here, make sure that your pan is very, very hot. So I'm going to add 
a nice knob of butter, and that, straight in. And on top of the butter, I'm going to drizzle a little olive oil. And the reason why I'm doing that, so that the butter doesn't burn. Oh, yes, nice and sizzling. Scallops. I'm using Italian scallops, which they're usually smaller. They go straight into the hot pan. Now, scallops, guys, the secret is very simple. Don't overcook them. This little one will take probably 15 seconds on each side. If you go the big one, cook them for about 30 to 40 seconds on each side. Just going to add a little touch of salt and a little black pepper. That's it, these are ready. So get a plate and just put the scallop in a plate. And don't forget the butter and the oil. It's gonna have full of flavors there, yeah? So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to rest the scallops and meanwhile, I'm gonna start to boil the water for the pasta. And as the water is boiling, I'm gonna show you how to make the pesto. For my parsley pesto, I'm using a pesto in mortar. For the pesto, take a large handful of flat leaf parsley. Add two cloves of garlic, a tablespoon full of pine kernels, and a tablespoon of capers. I'm using capers that they are in brine. You can find them in those little jars. If you want to use the one in salt, yes, you can just rinse them under cold water. Once you got that, we're gonna pour a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm going to start to add a little extra virgin olive oil. Like this. Now the only thing you got to do, bang, 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 mash everything together. This is exactly the way I want it to look, nice and coarse. And at this point, what I want you to do, get the scallops that you rested straight in. With all the butter, the oil, remember, this is all flavors going in. Hold everything together. I'm just going to add a little more extra virgin olive oil just to loosen up the dressing. And then, to refresh it, lemon zest. Okay, one more mix. Fantastic. Now you can imagine the flavors here, right? You got the capers, the freshness of the lemon, the parsley, the scallops, the pine kernels. This is sexy. And if you make it a little bit more, you can leave it in the fridge up to 24 hours and then use it the day after. Okay, pesto ready? Let's cook the pasta. That's the perfectly boiling water. The only thing to add now, a little bit of salt. Like that. And I'm using linguine. Yes, you can use spaghetti, but I think linguine with scallops and pesto looks really, really cool. In there straight away. Cook the linguine for roughly eight to 10 minutes. Pasta should be nice and al dente. Perfect. Now, what I want you to do, you can drain it or you can use a pair of tongs like this and go straight into a large bowl. And don't worry if there is a little bit of water from the cooking pasta because that will help the dressing. That's done. Now, yeah, the parsley dressing straight into the pasta. Right like there. Okay, at this point, the only thing you have to do is coat the pasta in the dressing. Use your tongs to twist the linguine as you serve. The last thing that I want you to do to this dish now is to put any kind of cheese grated on top. You will ruin the flavor of this pasta. Linguine with scallops and parsley pesto. What can I tell you? Minimum effort, maximum satisfaction. It's hard to resist the charms of the beautiful Cinque Terre, but I'm tearing myself away to show you one last secret hideaway. As I'm here to uncover hidden places, come with me.
I'm venturing a few miles away to the seaside town of Levanto, where these pedestrian tunnels link these little pieces of earthly paradise. Here, you can find some of Europe's best beaches, and if you're lucky, you can have them all to yourself. I've been to Liguria before, but this time I've definitely learned new things. Incredible gelato, amazing extra virgin olive oil. So if I can give you a tip, get yourself down here, stay off the beaten track and enjoy. Definitely worth it. <laughs>